It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the ASUS MX34VQ. The OSD is controlled by a jog button with two assisting buttons either side of it at the underside of the monitor below the ASUS logo. You're probably not going to be able to see it on the video unfortunately, the lighting isn't very good in here at the moment and it's very low down, it's difficult to get the angle. But if you refer to the written review, there is a, a nice picture showing these buttons. If you press the first button, that's actually a power button, um, so you can turn the power on or off. It's obviously on already at the moment and if you select off it'll go into the uh, active off standby and um, this power LED will not be illuminated anymore. If you don't turn the monitor off by using this and you just um, leave it in its sort of active standby, the monitor's power LED, which is sort of an unobtrusive white at the moment when the monitor's switched on, will glow amber instead. If you press the joystick in, you can see um, the functionality of all of these buttons, the first button, the joystick itself, and the third button. The, the third button along just allows you to change the source used by the monitor. Input select, so there are the various HDMI 2 ports uh, and the display port. And you can also switch between display port 1.1 and 1.2. And that's just there for compatibility if you're using a GPU that doesn't support display port 1.2. If you press the joystick again once you're on this little sub-menu, it brings up the main OSD menu. The main OSD menu is split into various sections. First up there's Splendid, which allows you to activate one of the Splendid presets. Some of these are explored in the written review. Um, a lot of them just oversaturate the image or create other issues which can't be corrected. Darkroom mode, um, for example, gives a very blue look to the image, but it's also very dim. Reading mode, on the other hand, gives a warm look to the image. It's actually a very effective low blue light setting, as I explore in the review, so that one is pretty useful. But I like to just keep things on standard mode for most of the uh, viewing that I do on the monitor. There's blue light filter, and this allows you to set various different levels of low blue light for the monitor. So a higher level decreases the level of blue light emitted from the monitor by a greater degree. The level 4, for example, also dims the image, but it locks off the brightness control. You can actually just dim the image yourself with any of the other levels, or even if you haven't got blue light filter enabled or any of the other low blue light settings, such as the reading mode, and that will decrease the blue light output as well. Brightness, as I just mentioned. Brightness can be set between 0 and 100, contrast between 0 and 100, the saturation and skin tone are only available in certain splendid presets but there's no re really no need to adjust them uh, in the standard preset anyway because everything is configured uh, pretty much optimally as far as this monitor goes. Colour temperature you can set that to cool, normal, warm or user mode and when you're in user mode you can change the red, green and blue colour channels independently. Image sharpness greyed out, um, aspect control greyed out, ASCR, ASUS smart contrast ratio, dynamic contrast feature of the monitor which is explored in the review. Some of these are greyed out because they're only available in other splendid image presets. Um, Aspect control is only available on certain non-native resolutions and possibly only when you're using HDMI. I haven't actually checked that out just yet. Vivid pixel, you can set that between 0 and 100 in increments of 25. The default value is 25. I prefer 0, but actually 25 and 0 are very similar. But what this does is it slightly increases the sharpness of the image, so it's an alternative to the sharpness control. And you can use that in all of the splendid presets. Much, as I said, 0 and 25, pretty similar. Um, 50, things become overly sharp, and above that, things look quite messy, really. But if you're using a non native resolution, this might be useful for you to just have a play with and just adjust according to your preferences. The 
The speakers integration to monitor are actually very good as explored in the written review. They're some of the best I've actually come across on a monitor, so that's good. PIP, P by P, picture in picture, picture by picture settings. You can have two sources connected to this monitor, which I don't have at the moment, and then you can have your subsource displayed picture in picture, so with a, a sort of a box displaying your subsource on the screen and your main source around that, or you can have them displayed side by side. Input select, another way of selecting the input used by the monitor. System setup, you can activate splendid demo mode and that just shows the scenery mode on one half of the monitor and whatever settings you were using before or perhaps the uh, standard mode on the other side of the monitor. I'm not going to activate that because it does activate scenery mode and like scenery mode. There's Game Plus and this allows you to put an on-screen crosshair. You can select one of these on-screen crosshairs. You can also use the joystick to adjust the position of, this, um, of the crosshair on the screen if you don't want it to be completely centered. If you want to exit one of the Game Plus settings, you want to get rid of it, you can just use the X, um, or the third button, which becomes an X to exit that and it'll turn it off. The other Game Plus settings are the on-screen timer and the FPS counter. The timer displays a time in minutes at the top left of the screen and then it'll just count down so it's going to count down from 30 minutes there. And finally the what's called an FPS counter it doesn't know the frame rate of the graphics card, all it does know is the refresh rate of the monitor. So that will change according to the frame rate of the game if you have G-Sync, uh, sorry, if you have FreeSync enabled on the monitor. I didn't mean to excite you there, it is a FreeSync monitor, it's not a G-Sync monitor. There is Display, uh, display Port Stream which is another way of activating that feature or, or, or selecting DP 1.1 for compatibility purposes if you need to. Eco mode, this just sets the monitor to a lower than standard brightness, but it's actually higher than the brightness I was using uh, according to my preferences anyway. And it locks off the brightness and contrast controls for you as well. Next up there is a wireless charging feature. And this is integrated into the base of the monitor, a QI wireless charger. You just place your phone or any other object there. In fact, I'll do it now, so I'll show you. My phone needs a bit of a bit of juice, so uh, it's all automatic. You don't actually have to select anything on the OSD, and you can see that as long as it's actually in the middle, it'll start charging. It says charging wirelessly there, and by default, this Aura Light, as it's called, it's a kind of a turquoise LED which is in the base of the monitor and that kind of um, reflects around and creates a, a little pulsing effect here um, sorry a little lighting effect here it pulses by default if you if your phone is actually fully charged then it just displays a constant turquoise light source if you find this annoying which I completely understand but you still want to use the wireless charging functionality you can change the um, charging indicator so that it's off in the OSD and then this aura light disappears so it won't be distracting you if you do find it annoying. You can also change the charging mode so it's on when the monitor's on standby as well. So if you do like to use this feature a lot and don't necessarily want it to be only when your monitor's switched on then you can uh, use this as well, which will increase the standby power consumption of the monitor a bit, even if you're not actually actively using the charger. Before I actually used this feature, the QI wireless charger, I thought it was a bit of a gimmick. I know quite a few people do think that, but um, I do just find it quite useful. I, I often have my phone on my desk when I'm using the computer. You know how people are these days, they like to have their phone near them at all times, and it's just a bit neater having it sitting on the, um, 
the QI charging plate rather than having a cable connected to it to charge it. And I should, as I note in the review, the, the wireless charger isn't as fast. Um, it isn't as fast as having it connected to the mains electricity, especially not if you're using a fast charger like I can do on my Samsung Galaxy S7 and I've got it plugged in. But um, it's, uh, you know, it, it gives it, it does it at a decent rate and it's something that's quite passive. I just automatically am now used to putting my phone on the monitor plate, the monitor stand, rather than on the desk when I'm using my computer. And it's nice, it just tops it up, keeps uh, the battery topped up, so yeah, I quite like it. You can change the shortcut key, um, which is the button to the right of the OSD joystick. So if you remember, by default, that third button was input select. You can change it to volume, game plus, blue light filter, splendid, brightness, PIP, P by P. So, for example, if you like to use the blue light filter at night um, and you want to quickly activate that, you can change that shortcut key to blue light filter instead. And you can see there's a little light bulb icon now, so you can quickly access your blue light filter settings. There's OSD setup. You can change the timeout period, which is how long after the last button press in seconds that the OSD will remain on the screen before automatically disappearing. DDC slash CI, which is the some of the plug and play functionality if you want to use software to control the OSD, for example. And you just want to turn that off. Um, well, to be honest, you wouldn't want to turn that off on any system that could actually use this monitor. It's just a, a legacy feature, disabling that for some very old, weird systems. There is a transparency effect on the menu system, which you can adjust. It's set to 20 by default. You can have it more or less transparent. More, and that just reminds you that there's more options if you keep scrolling down. Um, and back, which reminds you that there's more options on the previous page. You can change the language of the OSD. There's a key lock feature if you don't want family members to mess around with your OSD, for example, perhaps younger family members information and that just reiterates what's also displayed on at the top here so it shows you the splendid preset that's currently being used how you're connected the current resolution and refresh rate and this refresh rate and the model number sorry and this refresh rate does change if you've got FreeSync active much like the um the frame rate mm -hmm. counter sorry you could uh, <laughs> i should have mentioned before yes um if your phone does go off and you've got it set to vibrate and you've got it on the QI charging plate, it does make a very loud noise. The vibration is you know, probably enough to wake up the neighbours. It's, it's crazy. Um, and that is one slight downside to that. But I guess if you have it on a solid uh, surface, some solid surfaces, it makes quite a loud noise anyway when it vibrates. Um, where was I before I was rudely distracted? Yes, the um, so this will display the current frame rate if you've got FreeSync active um, or, or the current refresh rate that the monitor is running so that'll adjust along with the frame rate of the content if you've got FreeSync active. Power indicator um, and that's just the power uh, LED which I showed you earlier you can just, just turn that off if you don't like it but from a normal viewing position you can't actually see it anyway because the monitor is pretty low down and it's quite sort of tucked away there anyway so I don't really mind it at all. Um, you can lock the power key um, again so if you don't want people to accidentally turn your monitor off or I'm assuming you can still turn it on uh, even if you've got that locked otherwise I don't see how you can uh, <laughs> disable or enable the feature very strange um, and there's an option there to reset everything to the factory default so that was a very brief and slightly rushed menu system overview of the ASUS MX34VQ. The reason it was a bit rushed is because I have very low battery on my camera. I do need to give this monitor back to ASUS shortly and I haven't quite finished the review. So I just don't have time on my side really. So I'm sorry it was a bit rushed. But be sure to check out the full review on pcmonitors.info and there's a link to that in the description of the video.